Hey folks, Joel here from Rainbow Nutrients R&D. And today's episode is gonna get a little scientific, so I'll give you a little heads up. Now, since we started in the nutrient business, we've had a lot of people come up to us and ask us about our ingredients. More specifically, are we organic or synthetic? Are we using any animal-based ingredients? Are we vegan or are we not vegan? And I'll just clarify things up for you. Rainbow Nutrients product line is an organic synthetic blend that has absolutely no animal-based ingredients in it whatsoever. So in theory, if it means anything, we are a vegan product line. Now, after getting all these questions, I went online and I started to do a little bit of research on, you know, what kind of concerns people had for various different types of ingredients. And the biggest one that came up was the concern for organic fertilizers, more specifically animal-based uh, organic fertilizers, and whether or not they would cross-contaminate harmful bacteria into your food crop. So, what we've set up today is we've taken three very popular organic fertilizers. Uh, we've got blood powder, bone meal, and bat guano. And we're going to see if we can cultivate some of the harmful bacteria that people might be concerned about. More specifically, E. coli, salmonella, staph, and MRSA. These are all things you want to avoid having in your garden. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell everyone that our product is better or whether uh, this other product is worse. I'm just simply addressing a concern that I found online and uh, we have the means to be able to do the research to find out whether there's any validity to this. Okay, let's get started. So this is the kit we're going to be using to conduct our test and uh, we just purchased it online from www.sciencebobstore.com and they have a whole bunch of science equipment that you can use to, uh, to do tests like these. And essentially we're going to be cultivating our uh, bacteria cultures using this nutrient agar. So nutrient agar is a substance that's uh, derived from either algae or kelp and uh, what it does is uh, once you add boiling water to it, uh, the uh, the cells of the agar, they expand and explode and what's released is similar to something like jello. And so this jello is what the bacteria feeds on. So anytime you see uh, you know, a TV show where they've got petri dishes and there's swipes of bacteria all over them, they're feeding off this nutrient agar. So they love this stuff. Now as you can see here, all of our uh, materials have been sanitized and uh, have not been touched by anyone, including these petri dishes which uh, have also not been touched by anyone. Now the three organic substances that we're going to be testing are uh, dry blood, bat guano, and bone meal. Now what I want to test is whether it's actually the fertilizer that's causing the uh, the bad bacteria to grow or whether there's bad bacteria present in soil and uh, it's the uh, fertilizer that's causing it to come out of the soil or to multiply within the soil. And so I've taken these soil samples from the same source and what we did was we put a planter out into uh, outside our office, uh, just in an area where it wouldn't be contacted, but would be uh, exposed to the wind and out external factors. And then we drew these uh, four samples uh, from uh, from that one uh, planter or that one uh, pot of dirt. Now here are the uh, samples that we're going to be playing around with. So we've got our control. So we're just going to be adding the agar into here with nothing else, just to see if you know uh, anything gets cult or, or any bacteria pops up because of that. And then this one will have agar and soil. So here's the soil sample we'll take from. We've got dry blood uh, with the agar. So we're gonna try and draw it out of the agar. Then we're gonna dip it in dry blood, dip it into the soil sample, and then swipe it along this test. So dry blood, agar, and soil. Then we've got bat guano and the agar. Bat guano, agar, and the soil sample, bone meal, and agar, sorry, bone meal, agar, and soil. So we'll see again, uh, we'll see whether we uh, actually get any bacteria coming out of the, uh, the fertilizer itself, or whether it's the fertilizer drawing it out of the soil. And so we'll put an end to that uh, by uh, uh, covering our butts. Okay, let's get to mixing the agar. So we've separated out nine grams of agar, and we're gonna mix this with 300 milliliters of distilled water. Now, we didn't actually have distilled water, so we used reverse osmosis water. And it may seem redundant, but we've also boiled this RO water up, just to make sure that if, for some reason, any bacteria has made it way in, into the water, uh, it wouldn't be present in this study. And then we're gonna be using this stick here, which hasn't had any contact with the outside world, so no contaminants should be on that. So I'm gonna add the agar to the mixing cup, Okay, and the goal is to get all of those agar cells to burst so that we get all that gelatin in there and that's what the bacteria will be eating. 
So we're gonna pour that in there, make sure we get 300 milliliters. And just a heads up, if you do this at home, this agar stinks. Ugh. Ugh. Just terrible. Okay. We're gonna mix that up. And then normally the instruction would uh, tell you to put it in the microwave for two minutes, but we've got a terrible microwave here at the uh, Ramo office, so I'm going to um, do the boiling water first and then I'm going to put it in the microwave just to make sure that we get all of that agar dissolved into the water. Ugh, this stinks. <laughs> Okay, and on to the microwave. Okay, and just to make sure that all those cells are in fact absorbed in, we're gonna throw it in the microwave for two minutes anyway, just to kind of heat it up so it's nice and uniform. Okay, all good to go, we will see you in two minutes. Okay, so we blasted this in the microwave for two minutes and as you can see, it is hot. Okay, now the consistency you're going to want to get is going to be somewhat like maple syrup. Except it doesn't smell like maple syrup. And then once that's uniformly mixed, which it looks like it is, we're going to cover it with a plate just so that it uh, can cool down a little bit and then we're going to put it in each of the petri dishes. Okay, we'll cover that with a plate and we have to let it sit for five minutes. Okay, five minutes has elapsed, and I'm gonna take the cover off. Now what we should have is a film on the top. So once this thing starts to cool down, you start to get this film developing. Now once we pour it into the Petri dishes, you're going to, uh, this stuff will harden because it'll cool down rapidly, and we'll get a thick uh, substance that'll be kind of like a really thick gelatin, and that's the stuff that the bacteria is gonna grow off of. Okay, time to pour it into the petri dishes. Okay, now I want to do this as fast as possible because the longer that the petri dishes are open and exposed to the outside environment, the, uh, the higher the risk that we're going to get contaminants in here. So I'll get this done as fast as I can. Okay, now we want to let those sit for about another half hour and, and let the agar uh, solidify in the petri dishes and then we'll do our swipes. Okay, all of the agar has settled and we're going to start with our swipe test. So we'll take it directly out of the bag and we'll get started. So the control we're going to leave as is. So I don't want to touch that, I just want to make sure that uh, that stays as is after we added the agar. And my first uh, swipe will be done with the soil sample. And that's it, folks. Now, in every scientific study, there are always variables present that are outside your control that may have an effect on the end result. These are called confounding variables, and they're variables that differ from product to product.
In this particular experiment, the confounding variables are how long the product's been sitting on the shelf or in post-production, where in the world the product comes from, and what kind of sterilization techniques are used. In order to keep things as random as possible, I purchased each of these products in the minimum quantity that I could find from an average garden supply store. This is the kind of thing that a normal person would do in order to get their hands on these products, so no special orders. Now we're going to break this up into a part two where we're going to come back and show you the results that we get from our lab. If we get any results, I'm going to show you guys. If we get no results, I'm still going to show you guys so that we can put an end to this argument or complaint or whatever you want to call it. Now in the meantime, if you have any suggestions for any upcoming videos, make sure you either private message me or send a comment in this video and I'll try and see what I can do to get around to it. If you need some more information on our product line, check us out at www.ramonutrients.com. This has been Ramo Nutrients R&D. Thanks for watching.